I'll say a bit, about, a bit about my background and the work that I've done, because it's directly relevant to the three points here which I've been asked to speak about. Um, I started working in the European Parliament for, for, um, for a member of the European Parliament in um, 1999, and I left to come here to Italy uh, in 2010. Um, and one of the things that I was heavily involved in when I worked in Brussels, um, let me know if I'm talking too quickly for the translation, okay? Um, one of the things I was working, um, very, um, uh, very energetically on were the pro-life and pro-family issues. And one of the things that I realized was that the, the European People's Party, um, which always perpetually has, uh, 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 um, I think it's the largest party for, for, for about 20 years. Um, when we lost uh, votes in the European Parliament on these two issues, on, on pro-life and pro-family um, legislation. It was because the European People's Party, which is basically the collection of, of all the centre-right Christian democratic parties, they, didn't, they, they stepped back from the debate because they had a, a hesitation um, to, to go all in, unlike, for example, the socialists. Um, and this hesitation was, was because precisely because there was a, a Christian democratic, basically a, a, a Catholic social teaching background within the, the, the centre-right in Europe, and a hesitation that legislators, when they're making law, should allow these um, Christian or even Catholic principles to directly legis uh, influence their work. Um, and as a consequence of that, um, and, and the, the most um, uh, illustrative example was uh, when Rocco Buttiglione was blocked um, by, um, by uh, the Justice and Home Affairs Committee of the European Parliament for serving as a European Commissioner. He was blocked on the basis of his Catholic um, formation, um, um, his, his personal beliefs. So we put together this organization called the Dignitatis Humanae Institute, right, um, in order to, to be a vehicle, a platform for, for Christian democratic center-right legislators in the European Parliament to say, no, 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 when I enter in the work as a legislator, as a lawmaker, I will do so because I am inspired by Jesus Christ and I will not leave that influence on the coat peg as I walk in. Legislate as a neutral actor and then take my faith as, as I leave the room and, and, and go home. Because that's an expectation which is not requested of any other philosophical or religious um, persuasion. It's not expected of Muslims or Hindus or Freemasons or socialists or communists, but it is expected of Christians. Um, and I, when I was listening to my two speakers uh, who preceded me, um, this thought w w was constantly in my head. Europe is indeed um, a, 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 a cultural and religious and spiritual entity uh, by its formation and by its history. And what the expectation is today, um, driven by the, 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 the very progressive side of, of, of the left wing, is, is that is, is, is not even allowed into discussion anymore. It's somehow illegitimate if we seek to form um, a common good based on, on that background. So that's, that's what my own background is. Um, and I might just make a quick reference here to the document which the Dignitatis Humanae uh, Institute uh, prepared and launched, um, which is called the Universal Declaration of human dignity. Now, this is a document which was launched by the then president of the European Parliament um, in 2009, Hans Gert Pertering, a very solid Catholic Christian Democrat. Um, and this declaration basically says three things. Uh, and this is this is the 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 the, the, the influence that I'm going to address my, my 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 three chapter headings here um, in my remarks. The declaration says. Um, that man is made in the image and likeness of God. Okay, that's chapter one of Genesis, verses 26 and 27. Um, 
and listening to the the, 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 the philosophical basis of the, the, the ethos now of, uh, of, of, of European civilization, what I want to do is to say, I mean, there are different ways of, of, of trying to trace the fact that Europe is a specific collection of, of, of specific cultural entities based on the, the Christian faith and the Christian, or I, I, I say in contemporary terms, the Judeo-Christian tradition. Um, and there is certainly the philosophical part um, of that. Um, what I'm going to try and, and suggest um, here is that we go from, the, from the, the, this Judeo-Christian anthropology that man is made in the image and likeness of God, we go to the, back to the Imago Dei and say that that is the defining anthropological principle of, of European civilization, if there is a, a principle that, 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 that a concrete principle that exists um, across these 27 terms, 27 member states, um, and beyond that, it is the fundamental principle of Western civilization itself. Um, and that's how I'm going to look at these points here. What is law, the liquidity of borders, and, and life under and, uh, protection? Now, um, Gregor mentioned the, the, the fact that I'm based at the, the, the Abbey of Trisulti. I don't know if anyone will have heard of, of, of that monastery um, based out in Frosinone. It might have crossed your radars um, because it's the home of um, Steve Bannon's Academy for the Judeo-Christian West. I don't know if, any, if that rings any bells with anyone. It has been in the newspapers quite a bit because that is our approach within the political sphere to directly um, address the points that you're making, which is the, 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 the receding uh, uh, rejected foundations uh, of the authenticity of, of Europe and try to put them back in to the development of Western civilization um, as it goes forward. Um, I think, Father, you, you mentioned yourself that looking at the idea of Europe as a civilization, we've also got to be honest with ourselves um, looking around the world and say what is not um, part of, uh, of that um, civilization. Because the, the European way is so ingrained the, or she said that the West, the Judeo-Christian Western way of seeing the world is so ingrained to those who, who come within it, we quite easily forget, perhaps a little complacently, that there are different ways of seeing the world and we're in competition with those different ways. And to some extent, that they even might pose what I would, what, what I would gently suggest as an existential um, uh, inflection point for the West as we go forward, whether we want to continue to base ourselves on, on our Judeo-Christian foundations. Now, I okay, so to look at the first point here, that, that's my background, uh, and I might just just add an extra thing in here. Um, as working so closely with Steve Bannon, I, I will be speaking from a populist nationalist perspective when I, when I, when I address these three points. Because I think that for me, um, as we go from potenza into actor, uh, as, as we take the, 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 the philosophical, philosophical and spiritual and religious traditions, we've now got to, 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 to find with renewed energy a way to, um, to, to make that the basis of our actual uh, body politic. So what is law? Um, well, basically, I'm, I'm actually quite libertarian um, in my own um, personal philosophy. The Dignitatis Humanae Institute isn't a libertarian organization, but I myself am. Um, so I look at the concept of law, personally speaking, um, with, with, with quite a high standard. Um, but it is interesting to see that, 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 that if we say that law is the, the set of um, formalized rules which are compulsory uh, to obey with, within a, um, a, a, any social um, identity. Why is it all around the world, or all throughout history, there is this system of law? It is hardwired into the human constitution that we, um, that we, ha that we have the, uh, what we call law, and we submit ourselves to it. Now, as a libertarian, that is, it's a problem for me, because I, I, I would rather that there was no positivistic law whatsoever, which is basically one group of people through a majority um, telling everybody how they have to live. I, 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 I am against that. 
And it is interesting to see the, 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 the historical progression of the concept of law, um, because it is something that, that, that it, it is an empirically observable phenomenon that, we, that, that societies um, submit themselves to law. You know, on Thursday, the Americans celebrated Thanksgiving. Um, and even while there's, there's 102 um, um, uh, uh, pilgrims were even off the Mayflower, they had put together this, this called the Mayflower Compact, which is like a, power, a short paragraph. But it's, it's, it's their attempt, to, even whilst they're on the ship, right, even before they, they, they've landed at Plymouth Rock, here is their organi or formal organizational, organizational system where they choose to elect a governor and submit to, um, to, 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 to that sense of order. It's ingrained within the human condition that we do this. And what I would like to suggest in answering this question, my, my, the first question that, I, that I've been asked to speak to, which is, what is law? Um, I, I would suggest that God did not put that in us, because I, I, I assume that we'll all assume, I assume that we all take the fact that there is a basic human nature as a given um, here in, 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 in this debate. Um, God, I would suggest, put that, that desire to submit ourselves to the law, not because he had in mind the idea that by 2019, we would form secular parliaments um, under constitutions um, that would create law. But because God wanted us, first and foremost, to respond to his law um, from the Ten Commandments onwards, that is the desire that he put in our hearts. And I would suggest that this great secularist experiment leading on, sadly, from Rousseau and the, and the French Revolution has supplanted that desire that is part of the human constitution to respond to the law of God, that has been moved to, to the side. Uh, part of that is, is, phenomenon is what I mentioned before, um, this intolerance of, of, of the presence of Christianity in the public s sphere. That desire to be obedient to the law of God has been pushed aside in the West um, and supplanted by the, the, the secular system of law that we have now. It uses the same word, law, I, I'm speaking in English, but legge in Ital Italian or whatever language, lex in, in Latin or whatever. The, 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 it uses the, the word, but the substitution has taken place to the extent that even if it were the case that, that only a tyrant would propose laws that, 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 that contradict um, 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 the the um, what's the, t the philosophical term for the, um, the the natural order? I forget what the natural law, right? E e even e uh, even when the natural law has been pushed to one side by 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 um, by, by secular states. There is no suggestion, which it is doing for, for, explicitly on abortion, on euthanasia, on, on transgender issues. This is the natural law being pushed to one side. That where is the voice that says that we are not as Catholics obliged to obey this law because it is, a direct, conf it is in direct confrontation with the law of God? Funnily enough, the argument that I'm making will have a greater resonance within the sphere that I mentioned only obliquely a few moments ago, which is the Islamic sphere. Um, the, the, the Islamic sphere ha ha have none of this, in, in, uh, this idea of, um, of, 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 the, of a religious sphere separate from a secular sphere. Um, it's all you know, separate from a judicial sphere. It's all one within the Islamic sphere. Um, and it is interesting to see that at least within that sh Sharia system, there is a greater coherence, because they don't have that difference, than we have here in the West. Um, and that, I think, ma makes us, uh, when I mentioned existential threats, that, that makes us crucially weak. Because not, it's not simply a case that, we're, that, that, um, that we've substituted the law of God for the law of man. It's the fact that we've done that. We've substituted the truth for error, for anthropological error and philosophical error. Um, and that, I think, puts us... If, culturally in a, in a fundamentally extremely weak situation. So that's the point, on the point of what is law, and I'd like to suggest that, that, that I recognize the, 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 the holy law of God as, as the starting point of this, because the God himself, um, is, for me, is, is the only authority, the, the only lawgiver. 
let's put it like that. Um, and what we do here on Earth has to, you know, this is exactly what you, that, that, that you were saying, right? What we do here on Earth has to be consonant um, with that. Um, but we need to be aware of the fact that even though the, the word law is used, uh, as we're talking about Parliament in the UK or Montecitorio here, here in Italy or, or, or Brussels, it's not the same thing and it's not on the same level. This is, there's a great um, tension here, I think, uh, as you rightly pointed out, between this idea, the, the positivist construct of parliamentary law. Um, but I do want to suggest that, 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 the, that the, the desire and the need even to respond to a, a secular form of law is hardwired in us, first and foremost, because God put it there so, so that we would respond to him. So that's my approach to the question of, um, of, of what is law. And I, I will, if, if, if I'm not cut short, I, I realize that everyone is, is starting to think of, of, of lunch. If, if I'm not cut short, I, I, I will just say what the threat for us will be as we go forward, um, having made that substitution. Right now, I will talk about the um, the liquidity of borders because this is something that it, it, that is topical um, right across the West, um, and and it's not so much from from a libertarian perspective on the free movement of people or the free free movement of goods. Excuse me, that that that, that I that I would have a problem with. Um, it's the threat to the, to, to the social order that widespread, uncontrolled immigration poses um, to the West. Um, and the reason for that is simply is because the money doesn't exist. We, we can't even fund the, the social welfare systems that we have in Europe or in the, in the United States or wherever you um, choose um, to look at. Um, and yet, um, the UN with this global uh, mig migrancy compact, and the EU, if you, if you remember the, 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 the former, the, the recently former president of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, said before the last European elections um, that um, anybody, uh, th th this, is, this is the direct quote, um, that anybody who wants to come into, the, uh, in, into Europe and has the means to do so should be given a legal pathway um, and then even there are even uh, voices coming out, I have to say, of the Vatican. Um, right, right at the top, Pope Francis has, has spoken himself about um, a human right to, to migrate. Um, um, which I, I won't resist because we're here in a Catholic university. I, I, I won't resist. That. I've resisted that, 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 that idea publicly elsewhere. I, I won't do so. Hey, um, uh, is, is that a sign of the disapproval of the church for what I've uh, ju already hinted at? Um, I won't do that too much. But the, 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 coming at these, these ideas from a, a populist nationalist perspective, it is absolutely essential and legitimate for the people themselves who pay for the welfare state, which is that vehicle that provides health care and education and the whole array of services um, it, it, uh, through their taxes, it is legitimate for taxpayers in any country to decide what the, what the level of immigration into that country is going to be. Um, and here, um, I, I think, and, I, and I'll be very Guarded with with how how I how I say this because I, I don't I don't want to I don't want the the clergy to start throwing things um, at me here I would suggest that the, the role of the Catholic Church and as as Pope Benedict said was to say what the principles are that govern the political debate and um, which is of course the promotion of the common good the role of the church. Um, is not to enter into what are these uh, effectively prudential decisions which belong, if we, if we have a secular sphere, then they belong to the secular sphere. Um, I, I would personally believe, as I say as a libertarian, that these issues did, uh, that belong to, to each individual person to, to respond to. But if, whilst we are in a system that has, that recognizes secular law and in a system that then gives to the secular state the right of, of, of raising taxes, which is simply the, the legal means of taking people's private property away from them to spend on, on, on the priorities of government. Whilst we are in that system, 
I would say that there's not only an illicit um, a possibility for people to decide who enters and who doesn't. It's actually imperative that they do so. Um, as I say, we're not in a, in a libertarian paradise. That is the reality. Um, so on the, on the liquidity of borders, here um, I, I would suggest that, that there is pro, pro, the, 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 the fact that the UN, the EU, and even to some extent um, the, the, the Holy Father himself are, are pushing this, um, the, 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 the abolition of, what are effectively the abolition of, of borders, um, from a nationalist populist perspective, that is an existential threat to the, to the safe, um, secure, um, and viable nation state. And I will say that there is an element here within Catholic social teaching which prioritize, prioritizes the social order, right? If we go back into the past, the reason that the Catholic Church, for example, was, one of the reasons was against um, the French Revolution was because it was an overthrow of a social order. And this idea of maintaining the... Um, a given social order, even if it's bad, um, has a great weight in Catholic social teaching. And I would suggest that, that with the current um, position that the, the Catholic Church is taking with regards to immigration for, few, for future generations, that is going to create a very big um, uh, instability of the social order going forward. Because as I say, at the end of the day, services need to be provided. No hospital, in, certainly in Italy or the UK, or, um, or anywhere else, I think, in the EU, would turn someone away um, um, sh on the fact that they, that, they, that, they, that they were illegally present um, in the country. Those services will be given to, to, to who turns up and who has need. But, it, but it, if it's the taxpayers that are paying for that, and taxpayers, certainly here in Italy, already feel that they are so overburdened already with taxes, I think it is legitimate for, for, for the people themselves to say what, what, what the... What the, what the um, what the, 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 the poorest nature of the border should be, who should come in and, and, and who shouldn't, rather than um, 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 any other um, uh, tier of government. Let me put it like that. That is to say, not the European Parliament, not the, um, not the UN. Okay, so that, that's my view on that. And I will obviously take questions on this um, afterwards, but that, that, that would be the populist nationalist response to the liquidity of borders issue. Um, and here on the, the life under protection, um, I would like to quote here from the chapter, um, excuse me, paragraph 11 of the Universal Declaration of Human Dignity. And I'll read it slowly for, tra for, for translation. It's quite short, but th this um, will illustrate the danger that we, that we have now brought ourselves to um, in the, the full secular revolution of substituting the law of God for the law of man. And, and, and here, here's what the, the declaration says. C calls on all men of goodwill to make explicit reference to the fact that the dignity of man and the state conferred human rights that recognize this dignity proceeds from the image and likeness of God, which is within us. And therefore, in believing man is created in the image and likeness of God, lies the only sure protection of man's dignity and correspondingly also his rights. And then the second point um, is calls on all men of goodwill to make explicit reference to the, unprecedented, to the unprecedented danger for a culture which accepts liberties as granted by the state, because that which is the state's to give is also the state's to take away. Whilst international charters may recognize certain rights arising out of human dignity, no one should dare to presume that such charters can ever in themselves be the source of such rights, which is the current situation if you look at you know, the Charter on the Rights of Man, the, uh, the, the, the French example, it is exactly that. It's here is the state, we are the state, and we, to you the citizen, give you your rights. Um, and personally, I think a far better system is the American system, which is the, which is the people gathered together saying, 
We the people give you the government, your, your, your liberties, what you can do and what you cannot do. Um, and I think that that going forward is developing this, this European civilization idea, the, the, the idea of the Judeo-Christian West. I think it's the American uh, revolution rather than the, the French revolution, which um, provides the, the way forward. Um, I have three final points that I'd like to make. Um, we'll get the opportunity for questions and answers, right? Is there time for that? N two minutes, okay. I I'll make um, three takeaway points uh, based on, on these remarks. Um, the first one is this. The demarcation of today's battle could not be clearer. That is to say, from a populist nationalist perspective, where governments base themselves on the desires and needs of the people and not in, in the desires and needs of the global elites which run societies um, is the best possible hope for, for preserving our, our liberties and, and fundamentally uh, our, our Imago Dei based, based um, human dignity. The second point I'd like to make is um, whether you're Protestant or Catholic, don't let anybody under whatever um, authority allow you to substitute your love towards God for um, social approval of, of, of man. And that's extremely important, not just in this debate, not just um, on these issues. It, it, it ought to be a, a, a motto for every single person, um, even in their interior spiritual life. God has to come first, um, and our desire, which, it, which is again part of human nature, to be socially acceptable, that takes second place to, um, to putting um, God first rather than judgment of our fellow man. Um, but it is also in, in, important um, in, on these three issues that I mentioned to do with what is law, um, the liquidity of borders and life under protection, obviously. My, my third um, final point, um, yeah, that's it. it it's our, our best hope of preserving liberty um, is, is within the, the populist nationalist um, framework on, under God. So th those are the three thoughts that, that, I'd like, that I wanted to share with, with, with you today. Um, I'd obviously like to thank Ordo Joris again, Gregor, um, for moderating this panel. The second time I've spoken at an Ordo Joris event, last time was in, was in um, December, um, I have highest compliments um, for this institute. I think it's doing great work and I'm honoured uh, once again to be invited to, to speak. So thank you very much for your patience. <laughs>